Carburetor tuning can be a mystery if you're not super familiar with it. Today we're going to teach exactly how to tune a key and carb on a Sherco two-stroke, so stick around. Welcome back to the Ride With The Knights YouTube channel. I'm Josh, joined today by Cameron, technician at the Moto Experts. We are here, we're gonna work on this uh, Sherco two-stroke behind us, and we're gonna talk all about jetting today. So there's always a lot of different questions that riders have when you get a new bike, sometimes you buy a used bike, and if it's not running quite right, the first thing everybody's gonna ask you is, well, is it jetted? And if you don't have experience in this field, or maybe you have a little bit of experience, we're gonna go through step by step. We're gonna answer some questions regarding how to know if your bike's running too rich, how to know if it's running too lean, and then step by step, disassemble this bike, jet it, and put it back together. And this is gonna be specific for the Sherco two-stroke models. However, it's gonna apply directly to any two-stroke that's running a key and carb. So if you have a KTM, a Husky, any of those models, this information is gonna be very applicable to your bike. Here are a couple symptoms to be mindful of if your jetting is too rich. The first one is your throttle response. Anytime you're in the low RPM area and you quickly get on the throttle, a properly jetted carburetor should uh, respond quickly and snappy and you should be able to get into the RPM zone that you need to. However, if your bike's struggling, if it feels very delayed, blubbery or slow, chances are you have too much fuel in this area. The second key indicator is your idle recovery. This actually happens when you let off the gas or chop the throttle. If your RPMs quickly dive or you fall really, really low into the RPMs, if your motorcycle frequently stalls or is stalling in the corners, this is another area to look for that chances are might have too much fuel. And the third symptom to look for is just excessive smoke or unburned oil. Often in the motorcycle industry, we call this spooge on two strokes. If you look at the exhaust or the silencer area, you'll notice a lot of unburned oil that's black in color, spooging out of the silencer. This is a really easy solution, a really easy symptom to look for that is caused by too much fuel through the jetting. Another common symptom is fouling spark plugs frequently. If you're constantly fouling spark plugs, then check your jetting to see if it's too rich. So some of the symptoms of a carburetor being jetted too lean are one, um, idle recovery. Um, you're gonna have this hanging idle when you come off of the throttle, when you chop the throttle. Um, if, you're, if it doesn't fully sit down to your normal idle, um, you're running too lean and most likely your pilot jet area. Um, the other thing is bogging. If you go to grab a handful of throttle and nothing happens, uh, most likely you have too much air, not enough fuel. And the third one is pinging. Um, a lot of you guys have heard this without even knowing it. Um, that is the sound that your exhaust will make on D-cell when you're running too lean. It actually sounds exactly like what you think, a ping, 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 ping. That can lead to detonation in extreme cases and cause in engine damage. In extreme cases, running too lean can be detrimental to your engine by causing detonation. Um, too much heat, uh, it will discolor your exhaust, melt pistons, spark plugs, power valves, cause tremendous uh, damage to your, to your engine. So. The first step to tuning your carburetor is to first access the carburetor and the jets. Today we're working on a Sherco two-stroke, so we're gonna walk you through that process. However, a lot of the steps are gonna be similar if you have a key and carb two-stroke motorcycle. Some of the tools that you're gonna need are um, first to turn your fuel off at the petcock, um, a number two Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, a three millimeter Allen and either a 14 millimeter or 17 millimeter open-ended to get the bottom of the float bowl. Depending on your make and model, the accessibility of the carburetor and the process may vary slightly. However, a lot of this is pretty similar. Once you've gained access to the jets and the carburetor, you're now ready for step two. So after accessing your carburetor, step number two is going to be uh, removing and identifying your, your jetting. Jetting is made up of four different circuits. You have your needle, pilot, your main jet, and your slide. Your slide and your needle are located up top, connected to your throttle cable there. Main jet's the bigger of the two jets on the bottom of the carburetor accessed through this hole here. The pilot jet is the smaller of the two and it will be accessed using a 
flathead screwdriver just to the side of the main jet. Once you have your jets and your needle removed, you're able to identify what the size of the jets are and what the uh, makeup of the needle is. By looking on the side here, there should be a printed number. The higher the number, the bigger the hole, the more the fuel. Going bigger will richen it, going smaller will lean the bike out. As far as the needle goes, you can see, you can identify the needle by this printing right here on the side. Um, that deciphers the taper, the length, everything along those lines. In order to tune your needle, you're gonna use this uh, clip right here to raise or lower the needle, therefore richening or leaning out the uh, mid-range and overall condition. One is the top, five being the bottom. Um, most of the time you'll see it around three and two. Step number three, once you have tuned your carburetor and replaced any of the jets needed, is to reassemble the carburetor with the float ball on the bottom, the slide on the top, and then to secure the clamps on either side of the carburetor and reinstall any of the components that you removed to access it. Once your bike is back into riding shape, you can go out, do some further testing to confirm if any um, tuning is needed after that. The ability to tune your own carburetor is a fantastic skill to have, and once you understand how carburetors work in general, then you're gonna be tuning mini cycles all the way up to full-size dirt bikes. Any motorcycle with a carburetor is gonna be very similar to what we just described in this video. If you guys have any questions about tuning your own motorcycle, or if you're interested in just getting kind of a baseline setting for your bike, feel free to call the Moto Experts. You can call the number below or visit them on your website, get a nice answer for what is a good baseline setting for your bike. If you guys like this video and you're interested in more motorcycle content, then feel free to subscribe to the Ride With The Nights YouTube channel or visit our website at ridewiththenights.com. There we have a free one hour training that teaches our 10 off-road riding secrets. If you guys are interested in improving your riding skills today, then head over to ridewiththenights.com and watch the free training. All it requires you to do is enter your email. It's completely free. Other than that, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next video.